Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. What an absolute flaming idiot. Either that or acting like an idiot so she can do whatever the heck she feels like. Good on you, OP, for confronting her about it, though. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe at the turned-on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. Lady refuses to pay for products she damaged because she doesn't need it. A lady in her 30s came into my store today and asked if we had clear treat bags to put small candies in. We were all out, so instead I showed her the only thing we had left on the shelf, a pack of opaque silver foil wrappers for treats similar to what Hershey's Kisses are wrapped in. She asked me what the difference was between treat bags and foil wrappers and I explained it to her, but she apparently couldn't understand because she then proceeded to ask me four times each, are these see-through and are these bags that you can put candy inside? She was holding the package of wrappers in her hand and the palm of her hand was not visible, so I honestly don't know how she was not understanding what the product was. I also explained to her four times that the foil wrappers were not bags, they're individual sheets of paper that you wrap around candy. Every time I answered her same two questions, she followed up with, but I need something see-through and, but I need bags. We legitimately went in circles for like five minutes until she finally said, okay, and seemed to understand. I went about my work. A few minutes later, I turned down the aisle to put something away, and I saw her open the pack of wrappers and try wrapping something in one of them. I was stunned, but there was a customer waiting to cash out, so I didn't confront the lady then and there. As I was cashing out the other customer, all I could think was that the lady better be paying for those wrappers when she cashes out, but lo and behold, she came up to cash a few minutes later with two products, neither of which were the wrappers. So I decided that I was going to try and overcome my confrontation anxiety in the face of this blatant disregard for store rules. The conversation went as follows. Me. So are you buying the wrappers, ma'am? Lady. No, they're not what I want. Me. Okay, but you did open one of the packages, giving her an out even though I saw her with my own two eyes? Lady. Yes. Me, sighing internally. Okay, ma'am, I have to charge you for the pack since you opened them. Could you grab the pack you opened, please? Lady, but they're not what I want. You told me wrong. Those are wrappers, not bags. I was beyond stunned at this point and irritated that she accused me of explaining it wrong to her when we spent five minutes going over the difference. Me, no ma'am, I explained to you that those are not clear bags. They're silver wrappers. I think you misunderstood. Lady, well, I can't use those wrappers. I need bags. Me. You still need to pay for them because now they've been opened and can't be resold. Lady, but those are wrappers, not bags. You told me the wrong thing. I can't use them. This went on for another five minutes until I finally just told her that I would let it go since the wrappers were only $4, but that she's not supposed to open items she doesn't intend to pay for in stores. She seemed a bit apologetic at least and genuinely just confused. Not malicious, but holy hell. I went into the aisle after she left and found that she had ripped the package open so violently she tore the barcode and then just left it in the wrong spot in the shelf. Unbelievable that people like this exist. This was my first day back after a 10 day break and it just affirmed to me that I'm just so done with retail. Who wants to bet that even if those wrappers were what she was looking for, she would have thrown the ripped package back and checked out with an unopened one? And our second story. Wait, you were talking to me? I do home repair stuff and I have a small wood shop in my garage, so I'm very familiar with my local big box home improvement store. It's the blue one. I'm also an electronic engineer and so often wear business casual clothing, slack, shirt with a collar, decent shoes. I look sort of professional. I was browsing through the paint and glue aisle in the big blue store and found something I needed to restock my tight bond glue supply. Just a small amount for a smaller project. I heard a faint, sir, excuse me. Honestly, it didn't really register. It's a big store and there are lots of conversations and different people around. The paint booth is shaking paint cans. Without even thinking about it, I picked up some glue and started walking away down the aisle. 
There was a faint, sir, sir, excuse me, sir, from behind. I left the aisle and walked down the main corridor through the middle of the store, just two aisles down into an aisle filled with sandpaper. I quickly found my usual 180 and 220 grit, picked it up, and started walking down that aisle. Only on later reflecting did I realize that I was hearing the fairly distinctive noise of someone trying to run while taking very small steps, sort of a kish, kish, kish noise. As I started around the next end cap, I again heard, far away, Sir, sir, I need your help, sir. I stopped at the electronics display near the lamps. The store has a nifty little fox and hound I would love to own, used for tracing out wiring. It'd be very useful for tracing the weird wiring in the walls of my old home, built in the 1940s. I started reading about it and comparing it to another toner, another name for this gadget, next to it on the shelf. Kish, 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 kish. There was this noise of someone coming to a quick stop next to me. As I started to turn, she said, Excuse me, sir. There was just a little touch of snippy in the first word, but the rest of it was timid. She was an older woman, think of her as a spry younger granny. She looked like she might have actually owned a Tweety Bird. Apple cheeks, flushed from running, and generally cheerful. I've been trying to get your attention, she panted in gasps. Immediately, I thought something was wrong. Did I drop something? I checked my pockets, phone, wallet, keys, all are there. What's wrong, I asked. With one hand holding her side as she panted, she held out a fitting to an automatic drip sprinkler system with the other. My grandson says he needs five of these thingies so that he can fix the water system on the pots on my front porch. Then it hit me. She's been following me. She thinks I work here. But she was nice. I didn't have the heart to tell her anything other than, well, let me help you find that. I do know this store, and I'm all too familiar with automatic drip systems, so as we walked, I asked her what her system was like, Together, we figured out she probably needed a few other things for her grandson. I helped her put the items in individual bags and wrote their numbers on the bag so the cashier could look them up on the register. Then I walked her up to the register and ushered her in line in front of me. We talked for a moment longer while waiting in line, and she said, Oh, thank you so much for helping me, but I'm keeping you from your job. You don't have to wait in line with me. No, ma'am, I've just got some things to get myself. I hold up glue and sandpaper. Do they give you an employee discount? No, ma'am, I don't work here. She was so surprised that she started laughing. She even joked with the cashier that he should give me an employee discount. I love stories like this. It just goes to show that you don't have to be an a-hole if someone mistakes you for an employee. That is as long as they're not being an a-hole themselves. And our last story. Homeowner asked us, renters, to pay for the maintenance costs of his second home. Key players. Me, 22-year-old female, first-time renter, recently graduated uni. Edwin, 70s male, extremely posh second homeowner. Background. When me and my fiancé, both early 20s at the time, were looking for our first place together, we ended up looking at a lot of flats. Most were way out of what we could afford and were really bad quality, damp, dirty, no light, etc. So we were really pleased to find a great two-bed flat that was within budget in a great location, right between the student side of town and a leafy affluent suburb. The flat was in a small housing complex of about 20 flats. Each flat was in a block of four, two on the ground floor and two on the first floor. Second floor to Americans. I don't know if it was actually designated for retirees, but it turns out pretty much everyone who lived there was elderly. Our oldest neighbor was 102 years old, and most of the others were 70-plus. Beneath our flat lived two widowed elderly people, and the flat next to ours was vacant. Our landlady told us it belonged to a man named Edwin, who lived in a very large house on the next street over, and bought the flat as overflow, so when he had family visiting, he didn't have to host them in his own home. We moved in, and things went great at first. The downstairs neighbors were really friendly and seemed happy to have young people about, I do a bit of shopping for the 102-year-old and say hello to the others if I pass them in the shared area. We never saw or heard anyone in the flat next to ours. However, the first winter after we moved in, though, a slight damp problem in the bedroom started to get worse. We told the landlady who got it investigated, and it turned out the whole roof was rotted and needed replacing. The landlady assured us the HOA would pay for most of the costs, and her and Edwin were liable for the rest. 
No problem, we thought, except one day I got a knock on the door and a smartly dressed and well-spoken old man was on my doorstep. He introduced himself as Edwin, and after a bit of polite but awkward chit-chat, I asked if I could help him with anything. Edwin, yes, you can, actually. It's about this roof problem I'm hearing about. What are you thinking you'll do about it? Me. Ah, you'll have to speak to landlady about that. She knows all the details about the contractor. Edwin, well, I don't want to bother her. I assumed you'll be fixing it as you're the only one affected? Me. Confused. No, as landlady, it's her responsibility to maintain the property. It's the property owners that are liable. Edwin, but she and I don't even use this place. You're here. I think it's only fair that you contribute to the place you're living in. Me. I don't think so. That's why I'm paying her rent each month. Edwin. I think you should do the decent thing and offer to pay full cost. It's crazy to expect us pensioners to pay you. I politely told him he'd need to talk to the landlady and close the door, shaking my head at the audacity of this wealthy, privileged man to hoard a good quality home without using it in an area where there's a severe lack of decent housing, refuse to pay upkeep on the property he's purchased, ask a young renter to pay money to fix his problem, essentially to pay into his equity while I would get no long-term benefit. Edwin must have taken his complaints to the landlady slash HOA because the roof never did get fixed. Worth noting that in addition to the flat we rented, our landlady rented out several other properties and also lived in one of the very large houses nearby. I suspect as her and Edwin were neighbors, they decided to avoid bad blood by simply ignoring the issues and fobbing us off. We spent the next four winters opening windows, blasting the heating and scraping mold off the walls until we finally saved up enough deposit to buy our own place. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.